Hello, 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 everybody. I am J Malls of J Malls Gaming, and Wuthering Ways version 1.3 to the shore's end is nearly upon us. We've had the live stream, we have the trailer, we know the new characters, so let's give my free to play perspective on it all. Shall we? I would say my excitement level for 1.3 overall is moderate excited. There's nothing particularly in this version that's blowing me away, but I'm looking forward to pretty much everything in the actual actual version update. The new zone is always nice, and one of the biggest things that I'm really positive and optimistic about is them leaning into alternate modes of travel. They pretty much are adding Portal 3 to the game, since Valve refuses to make it, which I approve of and I like, and Shorekeeper does something that I was at least hoping they would utilize the ecosystem for, and that is transforming into an altered mode of travel. She can basically turn into a butterfly and move around the map collecting plants along the way. Doesn't seem too broken or anything like that. I'm going for Shorekeeper myself because this game has absolutely screwed me when it came to my actual gotcha luck. We'll get into that in a minute. But there were two main things I was looking for going into this version. How does the Black Shores feel as a location to travel in? And can we get some new combat events? And we're seemingly getting there that. On top of having an entire new zone to explore and do all that good jazz with, there's quite a few events in this update that I'm pleasantly surprised by. A new parkour one, which is probably gonna be okay. I mean, if it's miles better than the first one they did, then hey, good on ya. But I like the look of this new retro game event. We're going around finding retro games to square off against unique fights for additional rewards. That could be nice. I think the biggest thing this game has needed since day one has been more more events and more consistent events. 1.3 is seemingly going in that direction. I think one of the undeniable strong suits of this game is its actual combat and its combat loop. And when the game experiments and goes non-traditional with the actual fight design or event design, that is when I think Wuthering Waves is at its strongest. Things like Depths of the Elusive Realm are perfect for this, where it sacrifices that party-based gameplay. However, it then doubles down on roguelike elements to support playing as one character while still being able to collect skills of other characters to utilize. And there's a lot of emphasis on echo-based gameplay. Minus shifts in the formula like that, I think lean into Wuthering Waves' strong suit and just how flexible this actual gameplay loop that it has is. So you can announce something like Fairy Tales Finale, which has co-op battles in it, and I'm like, dude, hell yeah! Because even slight modifications on this formula can make the gameplay feel so fresh and new and exciting. One of my other biggest issues up to this point with Wuthering Waves have been actual event length. Most of them I can bang out in like 20 minutes. So it's not a whole lot of actual gameplay when it comes to these events, outside of things like Depths of the Elusive Realm, which even then teeter on the shorter side of things in my opinion. You can supplement this with even more events, or double down in the future and make these events more fleshed out and lengthy, or this is just going to be the gameplay pace and loop going into the future, which is fine. Now, when it actually concerns the characters, and who I want to pull for, for me, the state of my account is a bit bleh, and it's a combination of bad gotcha luck and poor decisions on my part. Let me get into it. I think I overvalue just how valuable weapons were by themselves, because... Pulling on the weapon banner is guaranteed to get you that weapon if you get the 5-star. There's no, like, 50-50 or whatever you have to win or lose. It's just the weapon. So early on, since I knew I wasn't going to pull for Ji Yan, I want to go for Yin Lin, I pulled on weapons and stuff like that. I pulled on Yin Lin's weapon, I tried to go for Jin Zhe's weapon, and I only managed to actually get two of those limited weapons, but I pulled for three, but in totality, that's a lot of pulls that's not going to actual characters, so I didn't manage to actually pick up characters like Chang Li or the Painter Girl, two characters that I really wanted. I have a main team consisting of Jin Zhe, uh, Yin Lin, and Verena, and while my prime primary team is pretty sad. It's the issue I run into is my second and third teams. I have one team with Zhang Li Yao that I'm still trying to build, and my other team is Havoc Ro 
over, and I'm still stuck in the quagmire of having to level a bunch of four-star supports to really make those damage dealers viable. And yeah, I'm scrounging up whatever credits I can get in this game, because, like, it's a struggle over here just trying to be able to afford my talents and all that. One of the main reasons I'm really anticipating Shorekeeper is because she's a healer, and having someone to supplement Verena so I don't feel as if only one team is a really competent healer, and I'm just making do with the others, which aren't all that built for me, should be a great boon for my account. That is, assuming I get her. Now, I do have guaranteed, so I'm hoping that it will all pan out for me, but we'll see. We also don't know who will be on the second banner, I guess. That wasn't in the live stream, weirdly enough. If it's going to be a rerun, because if there was a new character, they would have announced it already, you have to imagine it's going to be either Ji Yan or Yin Lin, and I don't particularly want any new copies of those characters. Reruns I will be anticipating in the future will be things like Chang Li or the Painter Girl, because the Painter Girl really works with Jin Zha, so that really helps me. I can put Yin Lin on a Team 2 or something, along the Chang Li Yao, or Zhang Li Yao, who I'm not going to lie, I haven't played at all, really. I've been building him, but I haven't played him yet. So I guess technically I now would have three teams. Havoc MC being in the third team, uh, Zhang Li Yao being my second team. I have not built my Baijia, so she's not a viable healer for me. But my Zhang Jin is kind of built. So if I can get Shorekeeper, I'll just knock Zhang Jin down to my third team. Or keep her stuck with my Zhang Li Yao and keep Shorekeeper on Rover. That might be my strategy. This is a problem in my account that will just like normalize and become non-existent down the line as I continue to pull for new characters. But it's something I'm contending with right now that really kind of screws me on any content in this game that requires multiple teams, which funnily enough, isn't actually that much. So you gotta imagine it's gonna be Ji Yan on the rerun because he was the first character. But honestly, who knows? The only reruns I'm gonna particularly care about in the future are Chang Li and Zhezha. And maybe if I want to be a little bit stupid, I can go for Jin Zhe's weapon down the line. Like, maybe I can do that? Probably not gonna do that, though. I should probably learn from my mistakes. And it's kind of funny how the guy I've been building since day one, really, for my account, Calcharo. Yeah, I don't really see myself using him in the future since we have Zhang Li Yao now. So, for me, Zhang Li Yao is not really additive to my account, he's just replacing and power creeping Calchero. Unless there's a specific build that utilizes both of them that I'm just unaware of. But yeah, I think Wuthering Waves is going for the tortoise in the hair philosophy. It had some significant issues for a lot of people, still to this day from what I hear from people when it comes to mobile, though I play in PC, so. And instead of fixing all of its issues all at once, it's been slightly iterating on all of them and incrementally improving in nearly every respect and element. The new zone looks really interesting. I'm glad they're doubling down on giving us new ways to move around the world. They're giving us even more events. And if the storytelling from 1.2 is any indication, and at the end of 1.1, the story and the storytelling is getting more and more compelling and interesting. I think the game is going in a really healthy direction while still maintaining its sense of identity and gameplay while well, identity there. They know they have something really special when it comes to this actual gameplay loop, and they know the world and its characters are really just flat out cool. So you don't want to shy away from that, you want to build off of it. I think the biggest weakness this game has had up to now has been the events being kind of lackluster. Like that latest tower defense one, and I'm being extremely literal there, not the actual genre, like with defending a tower. I thought the event was kind of bland. It has some interesting premises to it, with selecting specific echoes that we take into each encounter, but again, it's so short and just bleh that I bang it out in like 20 minutes and we're done. I think the game needs some more events with some more meat on their bones, a little bit more staying power, and I think the game needs like one other form of end game repeatable content, and I think that's the sweet spot they should aim for. Uh, I personally don't care about Yuhu, by the way. If she's on the Shorekeeper banner, then I'll probably naturally pick her up, but I don't really plan to use her unless she's like weirdly broken for some reason. Shorekeeper for me is the big goal and the big aim in 1.3. Possible reruns being Ji Yan and Yin Lin, I don't 
particularly care about. I don't really want Ji Yan. I already have Yin Lin. That is, if they're even going to do a rerun, which you gotta imagine they will for the second banner. But we'll see. I am optimistic. I wouldn't say I'm overtly thrilled or anything, like chopping at the bit to play 1.3, but I would say that I am looking forward to it. Story has a lot of possibility to be really interesting and engrossing, especially since it seems like we're going back to the main story, or at least things related to the main story. Also, I will say, like, that entire new, like, dungeon we're getting when it comes to Encore's quest looks weirdly compelling. I was not expecting that to come out of an Encore quest of all things, but yeah, I'm down. So with that, I'll call the video there for the day. Though I will say, by the way, I am keeping an eye out for Camellia. I have no idea what she does, but I like the energy that she brought into the main story, and at this point, I'm just ravenous for new characters to add to my account. One day I'll get Chang Li. One day. With that, I'll call the video there for the day. Thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure for making the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know what your goals for your account are in the future. What reruns are you most looking forward to? Are you going for a short keeper? Are you saving throughout all, all of 1.3? What are your thoughts about 1.3 on the whole? Let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts and hear your opinions. What would you like to see in the future for Wuthering Waves to really keep you interested or get you back into the game if you left? I'd love to hear your thoughts and hear your opinions and hear your perspectives. Stay safe. Have a great day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Until we meet again!